heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you have given us uh, to come before you, Lord, to hear your word. Open our eyes, open our ears, dear Lord, and may everything that we learn here today, uh, we can put to effect into our own lives. This I ask in Jesus' name, amen. You know, we have been very fortunate that uh, in our sound room back there, Robert has made it possible for those who were not able to be here today, especially the sick and shut in, they can now watch the sermon uh, on the internet. And um, perhaps, I don't know if everyone has a website where you can see uh, the actual worship sermons. If you don't, you can, at the end, ask Robert, and I'm sure that he will be able to give you the website, and perhaps you can pass it on to others, and others can have the blessing of listening to the Word of God from the St. Augustine Seventh-day Adventist Church. <clears throat> you know, uh, <clears throat> the Seventh-day Adventist Church is known as a church, uh, a commandment-keeping church. We're known as Oh, those are the people that keep the Sabbath. And we tend sometimes to kind of like push the Sabbath and push the Sabbath onto people, perhaps because uh, it is the only commandment that says, remember, and people forget. And we kind of like, as Seventh-day Adventists, try to push the fourth commandment, but how about the other nine commandments? Well, perhaps you are looking at me this morning and saying, well, why are you going to preach to us about other gods? We, we don't have any other gods before God, or do we? Well, we're going to see, perhaps in a very short time. You know, during all the... Uh, different uh, empires, and I'm going to be begin with the Babylonian Empire. You know, the emperors thought that they were gods themselves. And not only did they think that they were gods themselves, but they brought on all kinds of different pagan gods, and uh, they had a god, they worshipped the sun. As you can see up here, uh, I think I can point here, you see the sun rays back here. They used to worship the sun. They had the goddess of, of love and all different kinds of gods uh, before the real God, which is the God that you and I serve. Well, after the Babylonian Empire, uh, you know, the, the Medes and the Persians came along, and they themselves were worshiping all these other gods and not only did they worship all these other gods, but they brought in some other gods. So every time there were more and more and more gods to serve. Well, the Medes and the Persians came and went, and then came the Greek Empire. And you know, the Greeks brought on some, some very interesting gods and into the, into their lives, daily lives, and after the me after the Greeks came the Roman Empire, and you know the Roman Empire was one of the toughest empires, and it did nothing but grow and grow and grow, and sometimes when things grow, we tend to not be able to grasp on everything, and something started going wrong in the empire and, and, and the, the, the king could not long, no longer uh, handle, kind of, to say, his empire. So while he noticed that the church was growing every day and the church just kept growing and growing and he couldn't understand why his empire was crumbling while the church was growing. Well, I can tell you why the church was growing. 
The church was growing because the church was accepting all of these different kinds of pagan gods into the church. They brought all these gods into the church. So the Roman emperor says, well, I wonder what I can do to save my empire from totally crumbling. Perhaps if I join the church, I can save my empire. And so he did, Constantine did uh, make a pact with the church sitting in Rome, which is called the Vatican today. They made a pact and Constantine converted to Christianity and said, I'm going to give all my power to you, to the head of the Vatican or the church sitting in Rome. Because I see that your church keeps growing while my empire is crumbling. And the, re the, 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 the real thing is that he joined the church, but not because he loved God, but because he wanted to save his empire. So he brought in all of the other gods that had not been uh, in the church as of then, and he brought all these gods into the Roman church with him. Uh, the church itself was making all kinds of saints, you know, out of the apostles, out of di different kinds of saints, and made all kinds of statues, and people would come and kneel down, worship to all these statues. Don't they know that they have ears, but they cannot hear? They have eyes, but they cannot see? And the Lord says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, here they were now making all kinds of different saints and different and worship different gods. And uh, they went as far as even the Virgin Mary they made into a saint. And there's nothing wrong with the Virgin Mary. She was a very, very good woman picked by God to bring Jesus into this earth. She was a wonderful person, but she is not a God. I don't know if you've heard in the last uh, two months, I would say, I was listening to the news on CNN, and Pope Francis just raised the Virgin Mary into the second person of the Trinity. I don't know how many of you have heard that. He raised Mary to the second place of the Trinity. So I assume that now we have God the Father, Mary the Mother, and the Holy Spirit. Where does that leave Jesus? They didn't say, I didn't hear it in the news. I just heard that Mary had been brought up to the second person of the Trinity. And the Lord again says, Thou shalt worship no other gods before me. You know, back in the, in the, during the, the Second World War, these three little kids in Portugal, uh, they were walking out in the woods, and, and, and all of a sudden, the virgin, a, a virgin appeared to them. This virgin is called the Virgin of Fatima. And uh, she gave these three children three secrets which were not to be divulged immediately, but when the Holy Spirit would let, allow them to divulge the, the different messages. And as of the year 1960, two of those secrets had been divulged. Well, in the year 2000, uh, one of the young ladies, this one right here, she had grown up, went into the convent, and she became a nun. And in the year 2000, she supposedly revealed the third secret that uh, the Virgin of Fatima had given her. 
Well, you know, these days, as I mentioned before, we don't worship other gods. Why are you speaking to me about other gods? But we do have someone who is a master of entertainment in this world. And we need to be careful. And this master is, he's the god of this world. And it's Satan. Satan is the god of this world. And Satan knows us very well. And he says, those Seventh-day Adventist people keep the commandments. So I'm going to have to figure something out so that I can get their attention. Perhaps, you know, if, if someone brought in a, a saint or, or, or a statue right here, I'm sure none of us would bow down to this statue. But Satan, who is a ma master of entertainment, says, I'm going to have to figure something uh, to get the attention of these Seventh-day Adventist church. Now do you begin to see why I was saying uh, thou shalt have no other gods? Perhaps we do have other gods and we need to speak about all of the commandments because we may be putting all our emphasis on the Sabbath, but we're lacking elsewhere. So we need to look, take a close look at all of the commandments to see if we may be faltering in some way on any of the other commandments. Well, I remember back in the 80s, I was a manager for uh, this big company called Motorola. They have all the uh, communications contracts with the armed forces, Air Force, Navy, uh, police, uh, uh, firefighters, all of the communications equipment is done by this big company, Motorola. Well, I happened to be a manager while, when the phones, the first phones came out. I don't know if you remember this phone called the Dynatac. And as a manager, they gave me one. I didn't have to pay for it. And when I took that thing in my hand, it felt like a brick. It was heavy. And, and it was not only heavy, but it was, I mean, I said, I looked at it. I said, you know, this can serve me as a phone, and if somebody gets in my way, I'm going to hit them with this phone and crack their head because, you know, it was really, really heavy. You could drop this phone and it wouldn't break. Uh, the only problem with the phone was that the minutes were limited. You had limited minutes. It was something like they began in the, in the about around 82, 83, they began with 50 minutes a month. And uh, so people were limited, you know, with the minutes. We'd, we'd, we didn't have data or anything else or, or, or messaging back then with this uh, big, ugly telephone, which sits in the museum at the mother company in Illinois. Uh, but uh, Satan doesn't like, he says, oh, I'll do I, I could use as many minutes as I could, and the company would pay for it. But if you had one of these, and you went past your 50 minutes a month, you would have to pay 35 cents per minute. And I remember one time my neighbor came in, well, after, the, after this phone, uh, Satan says, you know what, I have to unlimit people because these limits are no good. So he came out with a gamma of different smart, intelligent phones now that you could even send messages, data messages. And, uh, and I said, wow, that's good. And they came in all colors and flavors. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing one right here. Oh, it's in my pocket. Uh, they come in all kinds of flavors, but they were still to a certain point limited in the amount of messages that, that you could send. And I remember they started with like 50 messages a month. Any additional messages, you would really have to pay for it, separate. And I remember my neighbor walking into my house one, one afternoon, and she says, 
I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill her. And I says, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Who are you going to kill? She goes, my daughter. You're not going to believe this. You know how many messages she sent this month? 9,000 messages. And my bill is $800. I'm taking the phone away from her. And she did. Took the phone away. No calls. No messages. And guess what? Satan didn't like that. He says, I have to unlimit people so that people can have more time for me. Okay? And I remember they raised it from 50 minutes to 100 minutes, then to two uh, uh, messages, I'm sorry, 200 messages. Uh, and I think right after they topped 200 messages, I mean, kids nowadays, they, they text their mother from the bedroom and ask her, is breakfast ready? <laughs> you, you know? That much. So 200 messages was nothing. Satan again says, I have to unlimit. I have to unlimit the people. So now, I don't know how many of you do have message in your phone. I know I do. And guess what? I have unlimited messages, unlimited data, and unlimited minutes, which means that's good for my wife. She's not here. She's in the back. It's good for my wife because she can really talk on the phone, especially she has five sisters, and she'll be like two hours with each one of them, you know, and uh, that's a lot of hours on the phone. But Satan is happy because he's stealing our time. Now, with all this unlimited everything, you know, and, 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 and we've been so unlimited now that I remember when I was a kid, I, I used to be able to remember your phone number and her phone number and her phone number, and I could call you without even having to look. Now, if I lose my phone, I cannot call my wife because I don't know her number. <laughs> the phone is smarter than me because now you don't save anything up here. It's saved in telephones. So while the phones are getting smarter, we're getting... Thank you. <laughs> we are. We really are. And Satan continues to steal our time. And we don't realize we're like looking into the barrel of a loaded gun that is going to shoot us at any time because we have no idea as to when Christ will come. And as if he comes and finds us playing with all these gadgets, and not dedicating any time to the Lord, you know, and sometimes I wonder, I say we, you know, the first thing in my life is the Lord, really. The first thing in my life is perhaps the messages on my phone, and we're going to find out some of the things that probably take the place of God, and that's why we need to look at this commandment very closely. Uh, now we see everybody walking around, texting, right at the train station. You see everybody's, people don't even say hello to you anymore. They're over there texting and texting and texting. I saw, uh, I, I saw a little video of a guy that was texting and walking, and he walked right into a water fountain, trip and fell inside the water fountain <laughs> because he was looking at his phone and not looking at what he was doing. I have heard, I have not seen, but I have heard, of people falling down into the train tracks while texting. You know, this can be a very nice tool, but it can be a tool of Satan to keep us away from God. This, this fellow here was crossing the street while he was texting, and as you can see, he was hit by a car. I don't know if he died but uh, if he didn't, I'm sure he didn't have a good day that day. So uh, you see all of the things that can happen when we don't focus on God and we, we take our eyes away from God and put our eyes somewhere else. All of the things that can happen. 
And Satan is laughing all the way to, I guess, not to the bank, but wherever he's at, he's laughing all the way. Uh, texting while driving, that is one of the most dangerous thing. And I was reading statistics as to how many accidents and death are occurring because of people driving and texting. And it is thousands of people getting killed every year driving while texting. I, I just re retired from the police department in Palm Coast, and I did many, many, many accidents. And uh, while I was doing traffic out there, especially on I-95, you see these trucks going 90, 80 miles per hour, and, and the wind just pushes you back. Well, we were doing an, an accident at one point on uh, Palm Coast Parkway on the overpass. We had laid out cones, closing one of the lanes completely. We had all the red and blue flashing and yellow lights all over the place. I mean, you could see it from two miles away. All of a sudden, this guy comes like from nowhere. He runs over all of our cones, and he almost killed one of the officers, and he rammed one of the ambulances in the back. Immediately, I ran up to him. I says, what happened? He says, I was doing something I should not have been doing. I was texting my wife while I was driving. He could have killed easily three, four, five people there. So this is a good one for you ladies that begin to work at 8 and get up at a quarter to 8, and then you don't have enough time to do your makeup, and here you are driving. Of course, we don't do that, right? None of, anybody does that here? Probably not. But doing makeup while you're driving could cost your life. And Satan wants you dead. That's his mission. He wants you dead. He, wants, he doesn't want you to be paying attention to the Lord. He wants you dead. And he will get it one way or the other. We just don't need to cooperate with the enemy. We need to focus ourselves on God. This particular accident here, it was someone texting, and six people were killed. Six, I mean, in, in a matter of seconds. A couple of seconds, that's all it takes. It takes one second for you to take your eyes off the, uh, off the road, and, and, and you'll have an accident. I've seen many, many nasty accidents out there. Uh, this was just one of them. Uh, this other one, two people were killed. They were going home, and someone texting, hit him on the side, and two people were killed. And Satan was laughing, and Jesus was sad. Perhaps these people didn't even know Jesus. We know Jesus. So we know better when we go out driving and texting. It's worse than going out drinking and driving because, you know, someone who's been drinking has a little better control because he's got his eyes on the road. But if you're texting, your eyes are not on the road. Your eyes are completely off of the road. Another way of entertainment, as I said, Satan is the master of entertainment. You know, he captures our children's minds, and now there's this virtual games that children play for hours and hours and hours. Or if not, the little kid cries, you put him in front of the TV, and, and you go do your chores, and guess who's teaching your kid? Satan, through these methods. And I'm not saying television is bad. Right now, it's very good if you use it properly for evangelism to bring the word out to the entire world. But depending on how you use it, we can be using it as a tool of the devil. And this is one of the ways because these kids get so involved. And then they actually go out and commit murder, kill someone. 
you know, and then we ask, well, that kid was such a good kid. He never went out. He was always home. He didn't play basketball, didn't do anything. He was home all the time. In the meantime, he's out at the University of Illinois killing 32 people. And we ask ourselves, why? He was being taught in the school of Satan with all these virtual games, killing, 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 killing. And Satan keeps instilling that word on these kids' minds until they actually have to go out and do it. You know, very dangerous. How many have seen this? Anybody ever see this? Nobody? Well, let me explain it very briefly. I, it was a program that came out as a social, type of social media that came out where I thought it was so good because my son lived in Japan and I could actually talk to him and he could hear me, you know? And the, the name of that program was I, I, C, Q. But let's try to read it a little faster. I seek you. I seek you. I seek you. The enemy is seeking all of us. This took a lot of time away from people too. Because I was so happy when I could speak to, for hours with my son. He was in Japan and I would talk to him. I couldn't see him, but I could talk to him and he could hear me and I could hear him. And I didn't have to pay a penny for, uh, for a phone call because this was done through the internet. Well, after a while, this got a little bit old and Satan says, I got to modernize. Because that's, that's his thing. Con continually looking for ways to keep your mind busy. So he uh, went out and invented this one. Anybody here knows this one, Skype? Nobody here knows Skype? Oh, I see some people know Skype. Well, Skype was even better. I said, wow, now I can actually see my son in Japan and, and talk to him at the same time. And wow, it was like, like him sitting there and me sitting here and, and, you know, then I spoke, I spoke and saw my sister in Avon Park, uh, my brother in Cocoa Beach, my son in Japan, my daughters in Puerto Rico. And I said, wow, this is fascinating. But guess what? After a while, you, you get tired of things. And Satan says, I got to give him something better. Got to give him something better. So here it is. I'm sure all of us probably know. ICQ was back in my age, but this is right now during our age. And let me tell you, for those who don't know how this works, well, it's like a, it's like a web, okay? If you have 10 friends, you add the 10 friends to your site, and let's say one of those friends uh, happens to be me, right? And let's say then Brother Willie Nelson is another friend of yours in the web, and he notices, oh, there goes Luis. I know Luis. Let me invite him and see if he, if he will accept me as a friend. All of a sudden, I said, oh, Brother Nelson, yes, of course I know you. Yes, I accept him. Now there's 11 of us in, in the web, and so on and so on and so on. Before you know it, you could have 1,000 friends in a week if you really wanted to. You could have a thousand friends in, in a week. Well, the web gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the thing is that when you write a message to Brother Nelson, I see the message. I get the message. You get the message. Everybody else sees the message. So not only do you see the message, but you have to spend a lot of time deleting, 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 deleting all these messages. Otherwise, at the end of the week, you're going to have 2,000 messages, and it's going to take you hours to delete. So the web keeps growing. And you've noticed a spider builds its web, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And guess what? She needs to go nowhere. The prey comes to her and tangle up in the web. They tangle up in the web, and she just lets them sit there, and once they're tangled, she goes for the kill. That's how Satan works. He goes for the kill, which is you and me and everybody else. In the meantime, 
Oh, I forgot to study my lesson this week. I didn't have no time. But let's keep adding all the minutes and hours that we spend throughout all these type of media that the devil has put out there with the purpose. It's like, like the Israelites. They were kept making bricks 12 hours a day from sun up to sundown. No wonder they forgot Jesus. For after 400 years of that, they didn't even know who Jesus was. They only knew how to make bricks. And those bricks are like that phone that I had. They're heavy. The load is heavy. And you're carrying all this extra baggage. You know, as a Christian, we're carrying all this extra baggage on us. And we have no time for God. No time for God. No, no time for studying the Word of God. No time for analyzing what we should. Oh, you're not going to come with this now. Sports, there's nothing wrong with sports. I mean, a little baseball game is fine. I mean, you sweat and then you, then you take a nice shower and you feel healthy. Nevertheless, the problem is not just, you know, the, the, the baseball game or, or the basketball game. It's okay to do a little basketball. I've been bowling sometimes. So, the, the, you know, don't tell me that that is going to harm my relationship with, with God. But the problem goes a little further, and the problem has infiltrated the church. And now some of us have become couch potatoes, and we go from one channel to the other. Sometimes now, the, the, you know, Satan is very slick. Now you have the televisions where you can split it in four, and you can watch four games at the same time. Isn't he smarter than us? He really is. So once you become a couch potato, I know people personally that spend hours, hours upon hours watching basketball uh, during the basketball season, football during the football season, and so on and so on. Soccer now is becoming very popular, and everyone, everybody wants to see the, the Super Bowl too. So, you know, Satan is putting more and more and more stuff out there for you and me. In the meantime, you know, we say the day, the day is too short. 24 hours is not enough. It's not enough for what? I've seen people accomplish many, many things. And they use 24 hours a day just like you and I. It is time for us to be Focusing on God's word, learning it, learning it by memory if we can, obeying it, because you're only going to be saved through the word of God. You're not going to be saved through all of these other false gods that Satan is putting out there in front of us that do nothing but rot our minds and rob us of our time with God. So we need to do that. We need to stop. You know, this was supposed to be around here. Green, all green. Anyway, let's just make believe it's all green. You know? We need to come to a stop and think. Sometimes we come to a stop and we see it green and, and we think we should go when in reality we should stop and think before we go. Because if you miss that stop, you can be hit hard by the devil and you will never get up again. So it is time for us to really stop and think, how can I cut from this diverse ways that Satan has filtered or brought into the church so that I can have more time for my Jesus? After all, I say he takes the first place in my heart. So if we really say that, we should be doing that. We need to, uh, we need to make a U-turn and look for Christ because Christ is coming very soon. So we need to do a complete turnaround. There's a verse here, and I'm going to read it from up here. Uh, it says, 
if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, you see there's a condition there, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God is willing to heal us because we are all, we have all been damaged one way or another by Satan the enemy to the point, and we don't want to get to that point, that the Israelites got that they completely forgot God. Now, in many churches, you're having all kinds of weird marriages and everything is accepted. Uh, I just recently heard someone big say, if you're an atheist, no problem. Come into the church, you will be saved anyway. Is that true? That is a big satanic lie. So we must be careful. You know, some people say the end is near. The end is near. The end is is not really near. The end is here right now. We're in the last days of this world. And let us not be distracted by anything around us. Let us draw closer to God so that when he comes, he finds us doing the right things before his eyes. It is very easily to get tangled up into any of these webs that the enemy has out there. And there are many others. I just brought a, a few just to give you an idea as to how we in the church have fallen into uh, uh, having other gods rather than the one we say that takes the first place in our life. Uh, we're going to listen to a song now by the King's Herald. And I would like for you to 